Court is meeting at the relocated from the council chambers of the Franklin Township Municipal Building to a virtual meeting format is being conducted utilizing uh, virtual remote telecommunications equipment in conformance with the directives of the state of New Jersey. The relocation of this virtual meeting of the planning board was posted in the township's official newspaper, the Korean News, on the township website and within the municipal building. This notice details the following means of public participation. Link to the virtual meeting via WebEx or call in number for those without internet access. Public inspection of application materials was made available via the township website and or in the plan, uh, planning and zoning department in the municipal building. Formal action may be taken at this virtual meeting. As a reminder to board members, please mute yourselves unless you wish to speak or to provide a vote. Please withhold questions until all of the applicants witnesses have finished presenting at which time the chair will ask the board to comment. Uh, for those members of the public that are watching via WebEx who wish to speak, there are two options. Press the raise hand button to use this feature. Click on, on the participants icon in the lower right corner of your screen, which will open a new participants window on the right side of your screen. In that lower right hand corner of that window will be a hand icon. Click on it. For those members of the public that are listening via the call in number who wish to speak, please press star three. At the appropriate time in the meeting, uh, the township staff will announce your name, unmute you, and you will have opportunity to provide comment. Please provide your name and address. If provided a statement, the board attorney will swear you in. After speaking, if on, you're on the WebEx, please press the lower hand button. If calling in, press star three again. All right, so with that, we can do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, and justice, justice for all. Councilman Chase? Here. Carl Houck? Here. Zahir Rafiq? Here. Carol Schmidt? Here. Jennifer Ragno asked to be excused and Mustafa Manzare asked to be excused. Charles Brown. Robert Thomas. I see him. Thomas. I'm here. Sorry. That's okay. Sammy Shaban, I don't see. And Chairman Orsini. Here. Okay. All right, so uh, first order of business is uh, two sets of minutes, one for the regular meeting on July 21st, 2021. Uh, if I could have a motion for those minutes. Move to approve. All second. Yeah, uh, Mike. There. Sorry? Did you say you second? Yes. No, you you can't vote. You're not one of the voter. You're not you're not able to. Somebody else has to second it. I'll second it. Thank you, Dr. Chase. Dr. Uh, Ch Councilman Chase. Yes. Carl Houck. Yes. Mahir Rafiq. Yes. Carol Schmidt. Yes. Robert Thomas. Yes. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I was. Uh... I took, uh, I had to attend to something that me and, and Charles shared it. Okay, now I get it. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll uh, move on to the uh, special meeting from August 18th, 2021. I move to approve. Now, I'll just comment that I sent some very minor corrections to Christine and she has sent out the revised version. I mean, the biggest thing was filling in where they said 41 cars in the evening peak hour. Those words somehow hadn't gotten in. The other things were like correcting the name of the neighbor who complained as Avenir rather than Avenir. Right. Well, thanks, Ted. It's for once I really studied the minutes. Was that your second, Ted? I'll second. Thank you. Oh. Councilman Chase? Yes. Carl Halleck? Yes. Carol Schmidt? Yes. Uh, Robert Thomas? Yes. And Chairman Orsini? Yes. 
Okay, so we have, uh, I guess, no resolutions, no discussion, so we can go to um, general public comment. So I will open the meeting for general public comment. Um, this is for anyone who wishes to comment on a planning matter that's not the subject of its own hearing tonight. So if you are here and wish to comment on Seth Store Real Estate LLC, that uh, one hearing we have tonight, uh, there will be a separate opening um, to the public for that. So with that, I'll make a motion to open to the public. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is open to the public for general planning comment. And again, you can, if you're on the WebEx, you can press the raise hand button in the participants, open the participants list or star three if you're on. Mark, I don't see anybody. You? You're on mute. Hey. How about now? Can you hear me now? Skills have gotten really good. Sorry about uh, that. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. not seeing anybody. Uh, nope. Okay. okay. Um, so I will uh, make a motion to close the public. Sorry. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so uh, our hearing tonight, uh, Staff Store Real Estate LLC, PLN 21-00010. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Peter Lanford appearing on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is an application for a site plan approval for the construction of a three-story self-storage facility located at 471 Elizabeth Avenue. Uh, I would like to inform the board and attorneys are always happy when they can say this, we're not seeking any variances. This is a fully compliant application. Uh, and as the board can see from the staff reports, uh, uh, our team pre prepared a, an application for the board, which addresses many, many issues that the board normally has concerns about. Uh, so this evening, though, I will spend a few minutes uh, presenting testimony of the applicant so that the board can understand the nature of the operation, uh, our site engineer, and our architect. I also have our traffic consultant on. Um, however, uh, based on the traffic report, which was submitted on this application on March 26th. Uh, and as the board is aware, uh, self storage is a very, very low traffic generator. If the board wants to hear testimony, I'll be more than happy to present it. I'll leave that up to the board at, at the end. Um, Mr. Orsini, can I confirm that what we have been doing in the past is I can present all my witnesses in order, present all their testimony, then open it up for questions of the board members and public, if any, afterwards? That sounds good, Peter. Okay. Thank you. With that preface, I'd like to call as my first witness, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. John Williams. Mr. Williams, I need to see you. Okie dokie. Thanks. Sure. Sorry. There you are. Mr. Williams, if you could raise your right hand for me. Do you swear the testimony you're going to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. If you could state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address for the record, please. My name is John Williams, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. My address is 212 Marion Drive, Athens, Georgia, 30606. Good evening, Mr. Williams. Um, you are one of the principals of the applicant, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and SafeStore is in the business of constructing and either operating and or leasing self-storage facilities? Correct. Okay, yes. and at the present time, uh, how many facilities does your company have under its control, either actively operated or currently under construction? Uh, including in the entitlement process, probably a, around 45, uh, so, you know, 30, 
33 to 35 under construction or actively operated. Okay. And those are throughout the uh, United States? They are. Thank you. Uh, and this is your first facility in Franklin Township and also your first facility in New Jersey? It's our first facility in Franklin Township. We're working on some other facilities in New Jersey currently. Okay. Uh, for the benefit of the board, can you just briefly indicate uh, with respect to the self-storage facility, uh, is that a 24-7 operation or are the hours of these facilities limited? Uh, it's a combination, actually, in most cases. I mean, we have a, a, the facility is staffed uh, from uh, the 8 to 5, and then uh, typically our uh, tenants have a, a key card or a key or a code that will get them into the building um, at their yeah. Okay, but primarily the, the facility is staffed and open for tenants uh, during the day. And if the tenants need to access it in the evening, they can. Is that correct? Correct. That's correct. Okay. And what is the target market of these facilities? It's, it's, it's all residential, uh, it's, you know, residential storage. I mean, the 70% the of our facilities are rented by uh, actually uh, housewives and uh, the uh, and I say housewife, the, the the woman of the home actually makes the decision on the storage facilities. Believe it or not, because they're the ones that end up having to deal with the uh, aunts or uncles or whoever that might pass away or storage be moved or something. So it's it's purely residential and um, yeah, there we do have some commercial tenants, but it's for storage use only. There's no commercial businesses run out of the facility. Okay, and deliveries or to bring materials in or to take things out are usually done by what types of vehicles? Uh, box trucks at, at the most, like a, like a, like a UPS size kind of box truck, like a um, U-Haul kind of truck. Okay. And lastly, uh, typically a facility of this size, how many employees would you have uh, per shift? Two. Two, okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Uh, I would like to move on to our site engineer, Mr. Lamb. Yes, sir. Mr. Lamb, if you could raise your right hand for me. Do you swear the testimony you're going to provide is the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. If you could state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address for the record, please. First name is Tung Kyo, T U N G T O. Last name is Lamb, L A M, from the firm Boulder. With a business address of 30 Independence uh, Boulevard, Suite 200 in Warren, New Jersey, 07059. Mr. Lamb, you are a licensed engineer in the state of New Jersey? Yes, sir. And have you testified before this board within the last year and have been qualified uh, as a licensed engineer? Yes, I have. And have your qualifications you changed you. since the last time you testified? No, sir. I would offer the testimony of Mr. Lamb as a licensed engineer, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, he's accepted, Peter. Thank you. Uh, if Mr. Healy can turn the screen over to Mr. Lamb, I can have Mr. Lamb uh, start with his presentation. Okay, he should be able to do it now. Okay, Mr. Lamb, uh, you are going to hopefully be bringing up on the screen the site plan that was submitted in conjunction with this application. Correct. Um, let me know if you see my screen. We, we do. Yeah, see it. Okay, and so since these have already been submitted to the board as part of our application, these do not have to be marked separately, correct, Mr. Vignolo? That is correct, Mr. Lamprey. Thank you, Mr. Lamb. Uh, the first page that you have before the board this evening is just shows the uh, existing property. Can you briefly describe the size of the property, uh, what's going on there today, and what are the surrounding land uses? Uh, well, this is the cover sheet of the site plan uh, prepared mm -hmm. by the owner. This is identical to what has been posted to your township website. What you see um, in the middle of the page that I have shown in a gray color is the site in question. It is a total of 
two acres and it's located in BI zone. It's bordered to the east with Elizabeth Avenue with commercial and vacant land beyond. It's to the north, the facility is a um, the active adult communities with um, residential buffer and then the rest of the site is um, surrounded by wooded area. Currently on the site, it is a warehouse. Um, there's some residential dwellings and um, detached garage and things of that nature. Everything on site will be removed as part of this application and we are looking to propose a plus a um, self storage facility and a total um, gross square footage of 104 700 and a total of three four plates three story in total each four plate being 35 oh 67 square foot um, I would jump over to my landscape plan just because um, that would provide the most insight in terms of the, um, the substantial landscaping that we're doing on this project and as um, Peter has indicated, this is a fully compliance um, project with um, no bulk requirements or anything of that nature. So right now I'm jumping over to the sheet C701. This is once again has been submitted. Um, and it's the same sheet that's been downloaded from the township website. As part of this project, we're proposing a single driveway off of Elizabeth Avenue for both the passenger vehicles and the box trucks that's being used for this facility. It will be a two-way circulation around the site for two out of the four facade of the buildings. The rest of the facade of the building will not be accessed by customers and things of that nature. There are a total of 21 parking stalls, approximately half of it being located on the northern facade, the other half being located on the western facade. Throughout the site, the substantial landscaping is in terms of either preserving what is on site or supplementing what needs to be added. In addition, there are two loading zones um, being tucked away at the two ends of the buildings. Throughout the site, we are designing it to the current stormwater um, regs that has been adopted in March of 2021. Um, consists of several bioretention basins. Um, we understand that the board um, engineer has a few comments on notes of um, additional calculation and things of that nature and we'll provide that as some um, condition approval like we have done in other applications. Um, there is a wetland located to the southern end of the property, um, a LOI application, a letter of interpretation from LDEP has been submitted and we are waiting for the final issuance of that. Um, as part of this project, there's several piles being located on site and we're proposing restoration uh, most notably is on the northern facade, uh, northern side of the wetlands it is currently disturbed. And as part of this project, we're looking to restore and provide additional benefit to the environment. Um, the site will be served by public utility with the exception of sanitary sewer. Um, since Santa public sanitary sewer is not available in this area, we are proposing a septic field. This is such a quiet use in both in terms of utilities, demands, traffic, and all that. So we are proposing a septic feel. Um, it has been witnessed by the health department, but um, it's the final location has not been completely designed yet. Um, currently, we're proposing at the northeast corner of the site, but the exact location will be and the size of it might change slightly, but the general location is at that place. Um, as noted by Peter, um, we're substantially compliant with all the review letters. Um, the review letters, in fact, are very clean. Um, there is one waiver that we um, would like to request for is for a six foot high solid fence around the property um, to for screening. As you can see on this plan, there's substantial landscaping being proposed. Um, we would ask for a waiver for that. We can put the fence in, but we think we might do more damage to the existing buffer than it's worth. So we respectfully request a waiver for that. Um, there are some, some other comments that we have to work out with um, the township professional, including um, CME, the core engineer, and um, also their fire official. A um, couple of things such as their fire access um, off from um, Elizabeth, can't be a grass paver. We understand that when we work um, coordinate on the exact detail. 
Similarly, there is a fire access road being proposed on the southern facade. And once again, we'll work on the both sides and the exact material to make everyone happy. But all in all, the project is substantially compliant. Um, very little disturbance. Um, uh, in fact, you know, approximately half the site is being restored back to with landscaping of some sort without pavement. Can you briefly touch on lighting? What kind of lighting we're proposing at this facility? Full we'll cut off LED lights. And if you refer to uh, sheet 704, um, with the exception of the driveway, the entire site has zero foot candles unless you're in the paved parking area. All the area lights around the site um, are equipped with what is known as house side shield to prevent spillage beyond the intended area. All the LED lights are pointed downwards at the pavement where it's intended for um, light purpose. And there is no light fixture being proposed on the two facade, which is the southern facade of the building and the eastern facade of the building, simply because there's no um, public use of those areas. So we want to be sensitive to the environment by not just lighting up the entire site for no reason. And can you indicate to the board how garbage is going to be handled on this site? At the eastern end of the site, we're providing a masonry trash enclosure. Um, it's a very um, quiet use. There's only two employees at maximum shift. Um, we have a small trash enclosure in there, and both for trash and recycling. Um, adequate turnaround area has been provided. We have designed this site for an SU-40 vehicle, which is actually the largest box truck, as opposed to a typical trash truck being more in size of an SU-30 vehicle in terms of ash code standard. In addition, we have ran the fire truck um, around the site and it safely navigates the site in and out without any issues. Thank you. And have you had an opportunity to review the staff reports that were generated? in conjunction with this application? We have, um, and generally we have no um, issues with them. Um, there's compliance issues that we can work out with both the staff. Um, there is one item was um, the requirement of sidewalk um, being required along the property frontage. Well, um, initially we didn't um, provide any just because it was a, um, it just didn't connect anywhere, but we understand that if it's desired by the township, we will put them in along the frontage. <laughs> Mr. Orsini, if, if, if I may, there were there are three or four little items that were, I don't want to say little, but three or four items that were raised in <clears throat> Mr. Healy's report, uh, item number eight. <clears throat> Perhaps we can discuss those very briefly because I think those are the only things that the board really needs to make a decision on in this matter. <clears throat> and I've had the privilege of presenting numerous warehouse applications. And I know these comments typically come up in all of Mr. Healy's reports. Uh, we will deal with the screening of the mechanical equipment with our uh, <clears throat> architects. So I'll, I'll put that one aside. Uh, the sidewalks along the site frontage, uh, I have advised my client that it has been the policy of this board to request uh, front, uh, sidewalks along the frontage of the property. Uh, if the board requires it here, we are op obviously willing to do it. Uh, if the board requires a cash contribution in lieu of, we would also do that, but we understand our obligation with respect to this uh, sidewalk. Um, Mr. Healy always raises the question of bicycle parking. I, I think this is a site that, that doesn't lend to the need for bicycle parking. It only has one or two employees. Uh, the people who are coming to the site to pick up uh, materials or to deliver materials to their facility won't be doing it on bicycles. Uh, so I think in this instance, it probably uh, is not necessary. I also, for the same reason, think that electrical, electric vehicle charging stations are not necessary because people are coming here on a short-term basis, again, to pick things up or drop things off uh, and are not there long enough to really take full advantage or benefit of a vehicle charging station. And the same thing with uh, accommodations for pickup and drop-off. 
uh, that it was always directed toward a facility that has numerous employees uh, and if they were going to be picked up by bus or other uh, public transportation or transportation provided by the employer that would be available for them to wait in inclement weather. Again, this is not a facility that is employee driven. Uh, there are only two employees, so I don't think any of those things are necessary or appropriate for this facility. So we would ask the board's guidance, but would request a waiver of all of those things. <clears throat> Mr. Lamb, uh, did you review the environmental commission report uh, that was issued uh, in this matter on 9-9-21? Yes, we have. Okay, and uh, there were recommendations for pervious uh, paving in the parking area. Have we been able to handle all of the stormwater management uh, on this site uh, through the detention basins and bioretention basins that you testify to? And is there any need to provide any pervious pavement to assist in stormwater management? Uh, Porous pavement um, at this time for a facility of this size um, really doesn't make sense because we are able to achieve um, the stormwater compliance with the surface basins and is the bioretention, so it does comply with the green infrastructure requirement um, as required from March of 2021. However, the grass paper that was previously proposed for the fire access, uh, it has been suggested that we work um, with both CME and the fire. Um, official to consider the porous pavement. And we think that makes the most sense because it's seldom used. Um, it's required to be paved anyway, so it doesn't really make sense to pave it with traditional asphalt and just to generate additional runoff. So in those areas, we incorporate the porous pavement, but the rest of the site were for the common areas, we leave them as is with traditional asphalt. Okay, and, and your testimony addressed their concern about the lighting, the tree planting is, in, is consistent with the ordinance, and you did answer the question already concerning the detention basins that they meet current regulations. Uh, with respect to the CME report, you've reviewed that report. There are, uh, I believe it's eight pages of comments. Uh, you can address all of the comments contained in that report. Correct. Um, these are just additional information that we could um, coordinate with. CME to provide information for, and um, we can do so um, as a condition of approval. So um, just additional notes, um, a few additional calculation, some outside agency approval and things of that nature. So these are all items that we could provide. Okay, and I'll move on very quickly. Mr. House has, I'm sorry, the police have a report and they have no comment. Mr. House has a report dated August 9th. When we spoke earlier this week, you were going to try to reach Mr. House? Have you spoken to him since we last spoke? Um, we are unable to reach him, but we have left him messages and um, also emails, but it is a two page review letter. So, um, there's nothing in there that's substantial that we cannot achieve or satisfy. So I'm sure that is something we can resolve quickly. Okay, and then the uh, health department has no issue. With respect to the changes requested by Mr. House, with respect to the changes requested by CME, uh, by making those changes, will they in any way substantially alter or change what the board is looking at this evening? And we'll, we're asking the board to approve or these uh, minor corrections and updates and modifications to the plan. These are simply notes. Um, the size of building will remain unchanged, the geometry of the site, the site function, the site layout, the light fixtures, the amount of landscaping that we're proposing, the stormwater still needs to comply and all that information is um, just additional information. So this just as part of the outside agency when we um, address like DICC comments and Somerset County planning board comments will incorporate everything at once. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to move on to my next witness, uh, Laurel Martin. I am here. Hi. There you are. You can raise your right hand for me. Do you swear the testimony you're going to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. If you could state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address for the record, please. 
My name is Laurel Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N. My address is 220 East Central Parkway, Altamont Springs, Florida, 32701. Ms. Martin, by whom are you employed? Um, I am employed at Interplan LLC, but I'm registered independently as an architect in the state of New Jersey. Okay, and uh, you are presenting testimony this evening with respect to the architecturals for this property, correct? Correct. How long have you been licensed as an architect in the state of New Jersey? In the state of New Jersey since July of this year. Okay. <laughs> Can you just briefly then just give the board the benefit of your educational and professional background? Absolutely. Um, I have a five-year Bachelor of Architectural degree from the University of Tennessee, um, and I have been a licensed architect in the state of Florida since 2018, and then have um, been granted reciprocity licenses in approximately 40 other states in the U.S. at this point working on a variety of commercial projects. Okay. Can you, uh, Mr. Healy, as she is testifying, I believe there are three exhibits that I provided to the township, uh, which show uh, uh, colored depictions of the proposed building. Uh, Ms. Martin, can you indicate to the board the build, what the building consists of as far as materials and colors uh, and things of that nature so the board can have a, an appreciation of what we are constructing. Sure. Uh, the building is 100% covered in uh, permanent high quality commercial grade materials that would not require any maintenance, uh, including painting for the life of the building. Uh, approximately from the first floor up to 10 feet and upper floors and a few areas to the top of the parapet wall, we have a thin adhered masonry veneer stone uh, in a blend of dark grays. The remainder upper floors have an architectural grade metal panel and a pollock, uh, a wide panel profile and a light gray and a narrow panel profile in the same light gray intermittently spaced on the facades. Uh, the narrow panel profile sides and a dark gray at certain areas around the facade to the full height. We also have uh, a number of areas with storefront glazing um, and that have the composite panels in two shades of blue on all three floors, floors, and there's faux storage bay loading doors, which are visible behind those, and additional clear windows have been added around the main facades with red door panels as their backing. There's a large blue canopy at the main entrance in a matching shade of blue, and there are smaller awnings over the loading bay doors, which are also in blue. This facility is being branded as a Cube Smart and all visible loading bay doors at the storefront area are in the red corporate color for that brand. The building is subtly lit at night and uh, can be seen in the night rendering. Do you want me to share those renderings? Do you have the renderings? I do. So hold on a second. Let me make sure I can pull those up. Can you see my screen? Yes, it looks like so. Yes. Peter, are these these weren't submitted, so this will be A1? That is, yeah, they were not submitted with the original application. They were submitted in advance of the hearing, but they should be marked as, I think there's three of them that you're going to refer to, Laurel? Yes, I have three. Um, I have the two main facades that have public access. That one was the first one, and this is the secondary. This is where you can see the masonry facade and then the um, metal panels. And then we also have a night version so that you can see kind of how we've subtly lit the building so that you get some backlight to the storefront as well as some wash on the walls. Well, the York, one, two, mark, three. mark the May 1 through A3. That's a good plan. Okay. All right. Again, we were sort of talking over each other. Laurel, can you again just take the board very briefly through the three exhibits? Sure, absolutely. So this is the main facade and the front entry of the facility that you see the, the uh, two shades of the blue uh, metal panels, along with the clear storefront that allows you to see the storage bay doors behind that area on all of the three floors and the main main coming and going area for the facility. And then this is obviously the main facade. And you'll see the the um, different metal materials and how the panels work with the 
masonry that we also have. And then this um, is the other public entry to the facility as well as an egress. And then this is indicating the blue awnings that we um, are pulling the same colors from the blue at the, the front entries to look at. And then the third is the night rendering main facade is this corner down here or the main facade entry is this corner down here and then as you can see we've we've kept the the lighting to a minimum in deference to our our neighbors thank you but, uh, all right one other question uh where are the mechanicals for this building the condenser there are condensers only they're located on the roof they're low profile they're set back 30 feet from the edge we have a good line of sight they may stick up slightly higher than the parapet because the, but because they're so far set back we don't believe that there will be any negative visibility of them thank you no further sure. questions i have a question if it's okay uh the the representation well, 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 that's hold up. on for a second bob um i just want to make if, if we're going to wait till peter's done with all of his witnesses so let, let's see if he has any more before we go to questions uh, okay so you, Peter, do you have any other witnesses? I don't have any other questions of this witness. I do have the traffic consultant, but I won't call him unless the board has any traffic questions. And if they do, I will be happy to have them sworn in and answer those questions. I mean, personally, I don't think we need to hear from traffic. Um, you know, we've done a number of these now um, in various places. And like you said, they are extremely low traffic generators you're only going to go there for one reason which is if you if you have a unit there and you want to do something um so it's not like you know a lot of other uses where we're passed by traffic and you're just not going to have that so i i'm personally comfortable uh, withholding traffic in advance for now or or for good um so i i think i think you can go to board questions in, in that well, event, then I will conclude my testimony and then uh, turn all of my witnesses over to the board. Okay, Bob, so you are first. Oh, okay, yeah, I just have a, a quick clarification. The view that we're the rendering we see now, is this the one, is this the side of the building that will be facing Elizabeth Avenue? Um, one second. I believe that this is, um, you can still see this screen. I'm sorry, this is a different exhibit that has the, the plan on it. And this aligns with the Elizabeth Avenue. So, yes. Okay, then this, the this other is one. What, this is what you see from Elizabeth Avenue. It's just taken at a slightly different angle than okay. night rendering. The other, the other view you showed then, of the public entrance would be the one facing Somerset Run, the residential area, correct? I believe so, yes. Okay, I think that's good because I think the, the one facing the street probably projects a little more of a lighted surface than the other one does, and that's not directed toward any residential areas. So I think that's, if I'm correct in that, I think that's good. <laughs> Can we pull up a site plan just so that we can confirm that? Well, only one person can share at a time, so. And we'd have to give the screen back to Mr. Lamb. So this picture, I think, shows the west and north faces. The west face being the one facing Elizabeth Avenue. Correct. Okay, so the north face there has very limited lighting. That's good. Yes. That's the one that the neighbors would be concerned about. Yeah, and just, yeah. just so the board is aware too, these renderings are, that that's not the view from Elizabeth Avenue in that this is the perspective if you're in the parking lot. Correct, and think, absolutely. Think, yeah, and I think the other view as well, it's uh, it's not the view from Somerset Run. It's the view of the parking lot that happens to be on the happens to be on the Somerset Run side. I, I am looking at the site plan. Um, the building setback from the property line, the front property line, 
sorry, the front property line along Elizabeth is 100 and about 117 feet. It's pretty so, significant. Yes. Yeah, or probably about 125 from the traveled way of Elizabeth. And then the setback from the closest setback is the property line is angled. So the, the, the absolute closest setback to the uh, Somerset run to the north is 117 feet. And then again, it only gets bigger from there because the property line angles away from the building. So again, these are views when you're sitting in the parking lot set back far from the property line. Okay, I'm only concerned. I'm not concerned about the uh, light projection as much on Elizabeth Avenue as in the other uh, side of the building towards Somerset Run, which seems to be lesser than the uh, other yes. side. That's all. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Bob. Um, any other um, board questions for other? Um, Some questions. Go ahead, Ted. Okay. First of all, you show uh, this is all to the engineer. You show two substantial detention basins to the east of the building, and then a very small one to the southwest. Uh, you call them bioretention basins, but the landscaping plan says uh, seeded grass. Well, that's just an ordinary detention basin. That's not a bioretention basin, which should be planted with uh, some wet tolerant, larger vegetation, things like iris and cattails that will uh, a lot of uh, any contaminants will uh, just accumulate on the vegetation and be filtered out uh, before the water runs off. So you need to do something about planting in the detention basin. And I don't uh, see any input to the southwestern detention basin. There have been some comments that perhaps it should be wider because otherwise it would be too deep but i don't see uh, what water flows into it uh, the water for the southwest by retention basin is touching before, before you answer mr lamb perhaps we can give you the screen back and perhaps oh. we could bring up the site plan it would probably make more sense as you're describing it to so the board can know what basins you're talking about yes Okay, while I'm doing that, um, I just, I have a few things to bring to the board's attention and, and the public. So I have some comments. One, Mr. Chairman, I, I, we have received some additional comments that some people are having a little problem hearing you. Uh, Mike, so maybe you need to, I don't know, adjust something on your end. Um, also, to the public, I have you know, one gentleman who, who's asking me a bunch of questions. So I'll just tell that gentleman who's contacting me. You need to raise these questions at the appropriate time. We will we will open it up to the public and you will have an opportunity to ask the applicant any questions that you have or any comments that you have to the public, uh, but they can't be made through me through the comments. Or through the chat. So, Mark, uh, is this better? Yes, that does sound a little bit better. Okay, uh, maybe my headset was it's a remote headset, so it. Occasionally loses charge once I use it all day, so I plugged it in. So hopefully, okay, Mr. Lamb, you have the ability. There you go. Yes. Um, what I have up right now is the landscape plan. The question was about the southwest bioretention basin. Like, how is how is the runoff getting to it, and and things of that nature. It is capturing the runoff from the asphalt area within the driveway. There is a curb cut opening, and with um, stone and then it runs off and into those basins and um as pointed out yes these basins do need upgrade from a landscape standpoint and compliance with ngdp requirements um, in terms of plantings and soil medias and things of that nature and those were the comments that we were addressing in the cme's report that we um have to enhance so um that holds true to Planting common holds true for all the bioretention. There's a total of three bioretention on site being proposed. 
based on the size of the development. So that's why there is three required. And this one, you don't see any um, touch basins or inlets that are piping directly in because we have a low flow from a green infrastructure standpoint that a sheet flows off from the parking lot with curb cuts and that it flows over land into those basins. And these basins are very shallow. Um, these are only about a foot uh, deep in this area for the small bio retention. Okay, so long as there's absolutely no impediment there that the water can flow freely. And by the way, I congratulate you for keeping existing vegetation along Elizabeth Avenue. That is something I really like to see because existing vegetation, existing trees um, always looks better for the first 10 years or more before new trees get size. Uh, so. Uh, on the uh, fire lane along the south side of the building, I think we've always been told that pervious pavement does not support uh, heavy trucks and fire engines, I think, might be in that category. You, you better discuss that with Mr. Houck when you get hold of him. And if he won't accept pervious pavement, then I would suggest Yes, the parking spaces for ordinary vehicles are where you can put pervious pavement. Although I see your idea is that the water will just run off from the parking area down to the western. Um, well, I can tell you that it's better chance if we pick it right all 16 NFL games this weekend, then 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 John give me a waiver for Purdy's pavement in the fire line. So uh, I'll you know I'll take the parlay at MGM like that guy did this weekend. Um, fortunately, he's breaking from two last night, but they're they're just. Not sure I can't hear you. Can you please repeat that? Yeah, I said it. Sorry, I said it's it's very unlikely that that John would grant uh, a waiver from pervious parking in fire lanes. So I, I would think that would be a no-go. I mean, it's in his report uh, in two places, so un unlikely. And there's been some comment, I think, particularly from the Canal Commission that uh, you've asserted that the, the ground here is not good for uh, infiltration, I think less than 0. 0.2 inches per hour, but you haven't really presented any uh, data to uh, such as soil type to uh, prove this. Now, that's really an engineering matter, but you do have to satisfy uh, both the township engineer and uh, the canal commission engineer. Uh, uh, because obviously we all like to see the water infiltrate more and run off less. I agree. Um, that's something that we still have to work out. Um, it does require additional site disturbance to test basically every square inch of the site. Um, there's a certain minimum requirement based on NJDP, based on the size of your property, how many holes you have to punch in the ground to grab your sample and so on and so forth. By the time we're done testing, this will look like Swiss cheese, but um, a couple of things to point out. Um, the southern end of the site does have wetlands. Wetland predominantly means that, you know, there's inundation of water, so that's why the water is not parking, hence the wetlands and things of that nature. Um, we do obviously have, um, do you require some infiltration because of a septic field? So um, it's something that we do have to look into. So yeah. as far as complying with those, um, Outside agencies as part of complying with your staff reports and your professional reports and things of that nature. And I do agree um, in reviewing um, Mr. Haas um, review letter about the grass paper. We are looking to remove the grass paper and as suggested by CME, we are looking to propose the poised pavement. Poised pavement has been designed to withstand tractor trailers. Um, we have done a number of warehouse facilities currently and um, we are using them in both their truck courts and things of that nature. So um, I'm sure we can work out a design that's suitable from a structural standpoint and also what's good for the environment. 
So we are win-win for everyone. Good. Yeah, if you can satisfy Mr. Hauk, that's good. And I think uh, Patty Elliott of the Health Department expressed concern that the septic field was rather closer to the detention basin than she would approve. Correct. That's something we also have to look at changing the size and the geometry of it and the location perhaps for the septic, but yeah, you could have a couple of trees, move it up where those trees are and put the trees instead between it and the uh, detention basin. Now there are all these piles of material on the site. In fact, most notably uh, what would be just to the south of the building. I don't know what the materials are and how do you plan to dispose of these? Um, as part of the demolition process, um, it will have to be removed in accordance with NJDP requirement. Um, anything soil leaving the site does require testing and things of that nature. Exactly, yeah. And this, the site plan shows one of these piles actually off your site on Somerset Run land. I hope that that will also be removed. Um, there is a slight burn, but it is off site. So um, with the trees existing there, so that will remain. So there, I, I think you're referring to the Northern property line where my mouse hand is right now. There's mm -hmm. a existing pine row. So in order to remove that berm, um, that pile. This is to the so, east. The one I have in mind is to the eastern side. That particular version of the site plan, unfortunately, does not show it. The if you're referring is, to your there district. it is. You can just yeah, see the edge removed. of it. Correct. We are removing that pile. Okay, good. Good. Um, uh, with respect to your extensive plantings, which are very good, and you're proposing to put in fairly big ones, which means that at least the upper half of them will survive the deer that will eat the lower parts. Uh, you know, we have a super abundance of deer in the township and you might want to consider putting up some degree of uh, fence, even just plastic fence to keep the deer from eating the, the, the arbor vitae. They'll even eat holly if they're hungry enough. Noted. Thank you. Okay, I think I think that covers everything that I had down. Thank you. At least you're addressing these matters. Thanks, Ted. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, I have a couple questions. Ooh, go ahead, Carol. Just uh, two things. The Environmental Commission suggested that the lighting, the night lighting, be somewhat tampered down, limited. Is that something that you're going to take into consideration? Uh, we have, I think you, you can see from the testimony of the architect that we have very minimal night lighting on the site emanating from the building. Um, and, and so we will keep it to a, a minimum. Uh, if the fixtures are fairly low, then both what you're planting and the existing white pines will shade uh, the Somerset Run building from the lighting. And, and that was going to be my other point that our fixtures are low and we are at a substantial distance from Somerset Run and there's a substantial landscape buffer between us and Somerset Run. Uh, there will be no issue of any light spillage and we will keep the lighting to a, a minimum. All right. And my second question had to do with the water runoff. Um, I wondered if anyone had gone out right after the storm on September 1st and did the, the flood, any flooding in that area that was unexpected or different from what, you know, you did a lot of study about the water, wastewater, but. Um, surprisingly, yes, we actually did. Um, for whatever reason, from a planning standpoint, our geotech engineer was out there um, doing some additional no additional flooding was noticed. Um, the land topography very, um, you know, promotes well drainage in the area. Um, you know, even the wetland looks, you know, generally the same. So, 
nothing substantial um, that's unusual or anything of that nature. So good, thank you. And, and I could gladly report I was able to get to the bagel shop that morning without any impediments. <laughs> Yeah, the Canal Commission engineer wanted to be sure that you're not in a in a flood zone from the the stream. I'm sure you're not, but if you have uh, the engineer tell them that it wasn't flooded even after Hurricane Ida, that ought to satisfy them. Mr. Chairman, yeah, I, think, I think there's a related comment too on a on a uh, Somerset County Planning Commission report as well about buffers and such not so uh, in stormwater regs. So obviously you'll have to comply with Somerset County. So I think that'll be addressed there as well. Yes, Bob. If I could, if I could suggest that the engineer speak a little bit to the buffer, um, there is a buffer requirement which I think they do exceed um, significantly in certain ways. But then there is the comment about the uh, the fencing. So uh, I'm just going to read what the requirement is, and then what I, what I would suggest is that the engineer speak to the the degree to which they meet and exceed the requirement, um, and then justify why a fence wouldn't be required, perhaps because they exceed it in in other ways. So the requirement is that when you have a development like this adjoining a residential zone, you have to have a buffer 50 feet in width. It has to consist of evergreen trees at least at least six feet in height, and you have to have a solid six foot high fence. So again, if, if the engineer could speak to the, the the width of the buffer, the size, and the degree of plantings proposed, and I would suggest that he, um, I would think, try to convince you that that uh, the, the the nature of the buffering and the width of the buffering would, and the, and the preservation of existing trees would be enough such that the solid fence wouldn't be required. Yes, uh, thanks, Mark. Um, I'm sharing my uh, screen again. This is the landscape plan that was previously submitted. Um, in terms of the residential boundary, it is um, warning lot um, 273, which is the um, residential active uh, community. There is substantial pine trees that we are trying to um, preserve the evergreen trees along the property frontage. And in addition, we are adding three more rows of plantings on top of that, additional with shade trees and ornamental trees of that nature. Um, at the smallest point, we do comply with the 50 foot residential buffer. This is for a turnaround spot for the fire trucks, um, trash trucks, any laundry people go to make its way past the loading zone. So it does have a room to turn around, but generally um, the entire site has over 75 feet of buffering provided. Um, as previously noted, um, we think adding a fence along the property line just doesn't make sense. We'll probably end up damaging the existing trees that are there just to try to install a fence line. So that's why we respectfully request a um, waiver for putting in the fence. But I think we've achieved the intent um, in terms of both preserving the existing vegetations, the additional landscaping that we're proposing, and the setback from the proposed development from the site. And how large are the proposed trees? Um, it varies. At planting, the straight trees are two and a half inch caliber, and the um, evergreens are at 14, 15 to 10 feet in height. So um, they range from 10 to 16 feet in height in total. So we believe our, the intent is there. Well, one other comment I forgot to make, I think the board having heard a number of applications along Elizabeth Avenue in uh, recent months has established a policy that we will require a sidewalk on the west side of Elizabeth Avenue where it could serve the high school, but not on the east side. Yeah, I was going to bring up the same point. I agree. I agree with Ted. Um, I think the other project on the other side, um, and, and Peter, I think you've represented a number of them. Uh, we, we generally wanted a sidewalk where where somebody could get from you know the church, the high school, uh, you know the church is next to the high school, the high school, 
and walk all the way up to, you know, the, the shops, the businesses, your bagels um, on, 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 on Elizabeth. So I, I think, I think that was the intent and, and I would say that I, I would, I would be in favor of that. People who go to the bagel shop drive, they don't walk. <laughs> well, just in case they did, you got to walk off that bagel, maybe you walk back. Um, I do think I'm, you should have an electric charging station. What happens if your employee has an electric car? And it's, we have to think not just in terms of now, but 10, 20 years from now when we've got to have an awful lot more electric cars and maybe occasionally somebody bringing stuff will spend quite a while there putting stuff into their unit and taking it out. Uh, plus, as I said, maybe the employee on site will have an electric car. I, yeah, agree. No, I tend to agree with that too. I, I, I agree exactly with what Ted's saying that that we should we should have at least you know one or two or at least the infrastructure for them. Um I'm fine without the bicycle parking. I agree with you. Nobody's gonna, you know, it could be in one of the two employees will park up there on a bike. I don't even think you need a rack for that. I would agree with the waiver for drop off and pick up zones. Um but yeah I think I think the EV stations that's a fair point. I mean if you're and not only that if you're if you're local and you're coming and you're, you're you're not there for very long and you need to charge enough to like do a few more errands you probably could get that even in a short amount of time um so yeah i would agree we should put that in mr rossini given the limited number of parking spaces that we have which we think are adequate for our use but i have no problem then if we would put one charging station and you don't want to take two uh and then we're, we're, there's only 21 parking spaces on the site so yeah and, and and notice i said infrastructure so i mean if the if the if the electric if the utility is there right and you don't have anybody right now but you i remember doing this on another application i don't know if it was yours probably was um we basically said you know put in the infrastructure and then if we need it then it's easy to find the infrastructure and hook it up. That way you don't lose a parking space if you don't need it. That's a deal. Yeah, there's a, a new uh, state uh, law on electric vehicles, which is supposed to be incorporated into township ordinances will require uh, charging stations and infrastructure for more uh, charging stations. I agree that this uh, place at most will will need only one, but it'd be good to have one. As for the bicycle racks, you're fortunate that Mr. Brown is not present because he would fight for those bicycle racks. Uh I, I just did attend a seminar to, on on the new law regarding the charging stations, and and uh, like in all cases, uh, there is a push for them. But also, given cer appropriate circumstances, the board, once they have an ordinance in place, can grant a variance for the parking stations where they may not be appropriate. But again, we will gladly put the infrastructure in for one charging station, and if we have an employee who has an electric vehicle. Uh, or if we see that there's a request by our customers, we will then put this, you know, put the station, activate the station. Sounds good. Any other questions from the board? Okay, well, if not, um, I will, will I'll make a motion to open to the public on this hearing. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So this meeting is open to the public and Mark, you can take over. Just to remind, the, yep, to remind the public, if you're participating via WebEx, you can either use the raised hand function uh, to let us know that you wish to uh, have a comment or or make a statement, or you can indicate your desire to do so in the chat area. If you're calling in, 
you can press star three and that will alert us to your desire to ask a question or make a comment. So I suggest Mr. Chairman, we wait a, just a little bit to give the public the opportunity to let us know. Did have a gentleman who had some comments to me. I just want to give him the opportunity to let it let you know if he wants to make a comment to you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm not seeing anybody raising their hand and nobody indicating in chat that they have a comment or question. Same here, Mark. Um, so I'll make a motion to close to the public. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, Peter, I'll turn it over to you for any summation you'd like to give. Before we just, go just ahead. Very briefly, this is a compliant application. And I think by the comments of the board members and a review of the staff reports, uh, our team did a fairly commendable job of trying to present a, a nice project for franklin township both as far as the look of the building and as far as the landscaping around the building uh there are only a few issues that the board uh needs to really decide on and i and i think we sort of went through them but uh i just want to very briefly touch on them i think we touched on the screening of the mechanical equipment uh the sidewalks we discussed and the board is not going to require sidewalks along our side of the property uh, that no bicycle parking is necessary. We will put the infrastructure in for an electrical charging station, that there is no uh, requirement for pickup or, or drop off areas for uh, employees. Uh, other than that, with all other respects, we will comply with the staff reports uh, to the satisfaction of our township professionals. I thank the board for their time and consideration in this matter. Thanks, Peter. Um... Will the applicant be willing to, uh, in lieu of a sidewalk, uh, make a contribution to the sidewalk plan? I, I think you have the right to ask for it. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to, I can't say no. And did we, I like that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, did we decide on the fence around the, around the property? Yes, no? I don't think they need it. I don't either. I, I don't either. Um, but I, I do I do remember you requesting a waiver, so um, I wanted to make sure we got that in. I'm I'm fine with it. I don't think you need it. All right. So uh, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, from anyone who wants to make it, if no one does, then I will. I move we approve the application with the. Uh, various comments that we raised uh, being dealt with, if that's the right way to put it. And specifically, yeah. we yeah. Wave, wave the fence, we wave the sidewalk, we wave the bicycle rack, we accept infrastructure for a charging station. The uh, porous pavement on the uh, fire lane must be discussed with Mr. Houck. Uh, if you can present porous pavement that will bear a fire truck. That sounds the pretty comprehensive. The um, being removed will be tested for, be sure they're okay to take somewhere. Thanks, Ted. Yeah, that sounds pretty comprehensive. So I'll, I'll second that. Could I just make one comment before the vote? Sure. Go ahead. Bob. I think I think uh, this is a win for the township in a couple of ways. This is a fairly sizable, rateable, with virtually no impact that matches the size of it of the uh, rateability very little impact it's a perfect location next to somerset run to insulate it from the several warehouses that we've been recently approving there and uh, i think the applicant did a good job excellent job 
with the, the overall planning. Obviously, I'll be for it. Okay, thanks, Bob. Uh, Christine, you're full board. Hey. Yes. Laurel House. Yes. Irrefuse. Yes. Carol Schmidt. Yes. Robert Thomas. Yes. And Chairman Orsini. Yes. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I don't think we have any other business tonight, uh, at least on the agenda I have. Um, so I'll make a motion to adjourn. Can I ask you one, make one request first, Micah? You may. Uh, <clears throat> I brought up the idea of warehousing with this application. I'd like you as the chairman to consider putting on the agenda for a future a near future uh, work session. I think it's time that we have as a as a board, it's time that we have a discussion uh, about warehousing. We have approved over a dozen warehouses in the last eight to 10 months. And I don't know if anyone else is seeing it, but they're they're not even online yet. But this entire area is being inundated with tractor trailers. Uh, I'm not saying that they're bad or anything. I think we might need to look at where they're being placed, maybe adjust some conditions or something that to that effect. The state, of course, has uh, begun discussions on regulating warehousing and establishing some pretty stringent uh, conditions on where they can be located. So it's beginning to be, this is becoming a problem that is being universally recognized and, and maybe it's valuable uh, to look at it in terms of Franklin a little bit. Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a very reasonable request. And, um, you know, there's a couple things. Um, and Mark, I can talk to you about this offline. There's you know, maybe a little bit of, of data we need um, that you should have uh, just to have a productive conversation about it. Um, and, and so I can I can I can contact you offline and, and you know maybe we can put our heads together and see see what kind of materials that we can consider you know holistically across the township. Uh, of course, you know we're only dealing with the township and other townships near us that are going to have an impact on us or are going to do what they do, but hopefully, as Bob alluded to, um, you know, the state, I mean, it, it is where the economy is going. I mean, I don't see us returning COVID or no to the pre pandemic lifestyle. We, we get stuff from Amazon, we order it online, we have groceries delivered, uh, we pick up groceries, um, don't have to shop anymore. Um, I can't tell you the last time I've gone in a supermarket. Um, and, and and then, of course, the supply chain to address this is is obviously a challenge, um, which which brings us to trucks and warehouses. So, um, you know, we want to consider that holistically. We don't want to we don't want to rule out, you know, good rateables and and putting things where they belong. But we also don't we don't want to make it swing so far that you know, we're, 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 we're being run over with, with 18 wheelers. So I think, I think that's a great request, Bob. And I'll, I'll ask Christine to put it on. Um, let me talk to Mark first and see, you know, what kind of data we can come up with. I would like, like I said, have a productive conversation about it, but within the next uh, one or two meetings, I can't see why we can't discuss that. <laughs> okay. So, um, if that's if that's all we have tonight, I will uh, I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Yep. Next meeting is October fifth, I do believe. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Everyone, take October, care. Would you say fifth or sixth? Fifth.